Okay, well, I'll do that whole thing again. Hi, I'm James from Giraffe. Um, today I'm here with Lucy Diamond, um, the author of the new book Summer at Shell Cottage. Um, we're going to be learning how to make um, a cocktail called Cosmo Daisy. So if you've read any of my books, you'll know they're not sort of blockbustery. They are about real people and I, I try really hard to make the characters as realistic as possible. So I always read their dialogue aloud as I'm typing it like a mad woman, <laughs> you know, just to check it sounds right. And I try to make them real characters that you'd see in a bar or in a restaurant walking down the street. So the first thing we we have to do for every cocktail um, is basically cool down the glass. And the first spirit we're going to be using is triple sack. Lovely. Okay. So this is basically an orange liqueur. Over here and over here, you have your measuring jigger. Most of our greens today are 25 ml, so we're using Andy. this one a lot, which is great. <laughs> Give it a little bounce and pour it in. So when you say bounce, I'm... Just literally a tiny little bounce. Of course. Yes. Okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> this could get messy. We always pour it over um, the glass, just so if we do spill any, it goes oh, in the drink the and not on the, yeah. uh, or not on the board. Next up, we have um, gin. Uh, we're today going to use Bombay Sapphire. Perfect. I've got the knack now. So I've got a set of characters and I've got a setting and in this case it's an idyllic um, seaside setting in Devon. So there's quite a variety of different characters, old and young. They've all got their problems and they've all got their secrets but they're here under one roof supposedly having a lovely relaxing holiday. But I think there is a tension there as well between this holidaying large family uh, slightly getting on each other's nerves, finding things out about one another, keeping secrets and behaving quite badly at times. So for our sweet, uh, we're going to be using raspberry syrup. Lovely. Okay, exactly the same, 25 of this one, perfect. Okay. Yeah. So this is not alcoholic, this one is? This it? one is not alcoholic, no. So that one is our sweet, okay? Um, and now we need our sour. You can use lemon juice, um, you can buy it in, in bottles. Obviously using a fresh one is great. Mm. So I'm um, just giving a little wash before use. And then we're going to use our Mexican elbow. Mexican elbow? Mexican elbow, <laughs> yeah. Good little squeeze. Need bigger hands for this. And last one. All right. There you so go. So this is uh, not quite all of it, this one, yeah? Yeah, so just stop slightly before it closes right down. Lovely. Perfect. The last ingredient we've got to add to this is our juice. We're going to be using cranberry juice today. We just do one full 25 mil and okay. half another one. All oh, right. So yeah. yeah, one and a half of the cranberry juice. Oh. Pop that in there. Yeah, just a little bit slower. Lovely. When I'm starting out, I think of some really key dramatic moments, like cliffhangers, if you like. For example, in Summer at Shell Cottage, it's about a family and how they're all reeling from the death of Alex, who's the patriarch of the family. Throughout the book, there are quite a few secrets that come out. Thinking about the structure of the story, I had those in mind as key scenes to really ramp up the tension. It's that kind of moment I'm constantly trying to work towards, building up gradually, dropping hints, teasing a bit, and then you know, putting in a great big scene like that with a cliffhanger usually um, to keep the reader turning the pages and move the plot along. We're going to add um, our ice. If we put the ice in first, it would dilute um, the liquid, okay? And we end up with kind of a watery substance oh, at the okay. end, okay? So we want to keep yeah. all those flavours as pure as possible. Yeah. Place this on top of the drink. Next we're going to do is we're going to have to lock them together. So right. how we're going to do this is we're just going to hold the bottom yep. and we're going to give them a really good tap on top. Perfect. You put your hand across both of them. Okay. Hand on the bottom, take it to your right. Ooh. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. And give it a really hard, quick shake. If you do it for too long, you end up watering it down too much. Okay. okay. So that's why we do hard, quick shakes. I'm not one of those writers who plans everything out in advance. I sort of find it out myself as I go along. So there's always a moment where I think, oh, you know, this isn't working. And, and luckily I've got a really supportive family who say, oh, you always say this in every book. And it is remembering, oh actually, this is part of the process for me. There is all that doubt and then from, from that doubt, I usually find the answer and I work through it. We're going to get rid of the ice. A little good shake, just get rid of the extra bits off. Basically we're going to um, break the glass from the tin. Break the, right. Okay, not literally break, <laughs> okay. We're just going to basically um, take them apart. You want to tap just where it starts splitting. Right. Bar, I'm going to try it on the yeah, bar. Go for, yeah, you try on the bar. <laughs> not bad. Just try and use your, okay, try and use your hand. Is yeah, sorry. Sonic? Yeah, lovely. Oh, there you go. So what's important now is just to give it a little bit of a taste. It's the classic barman uh, taste tip. Oh, okay. okay. Is you just basically put it into the drink, tap down on the end. Yep. Okay. And taste it. Nice. 
That Get. is really nice, yeah, lovely. The editing is just as important a part for me as the writing itself, so any character that isn't really earning their keep in the story goes. It can be quite dispiriting to see, you know, page after page chucked on the floor, but it's the only way to do it. You want to try and keep the story really moving quickly and the prose really lean and tight. This is called, um, basically, a um, Hawthorne strainer. So it's basically what we're going to do is going to keep the ice in the glass and we're going to strain it out. Um, this is called a fine strainer. Let's pop that over. Lovely. And that just stops all the little bits of ice getting in. Perfect. So there you have it, the Cosmo Daisy. We make them across the country in all the giraffe restaurants. So pop in with, uh, with a book maybe and have a good, uh, good old taste <laughs> of the new cotta. Or if you want to impress your friends, you'll find the Cosmo Daisy recipe in the back of Summer at Shell Cottage. Lovely. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.